Cheers. You know, I had to use the bathroom the whole time we were on air. I just <laughs> held it, you know? <laughs> Man, I could really go for a snack right now. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to the Go HQ podcast. With me is Amy Bailey. I'm Keith McCormick, trainers and educators up here, hopefully. Um, <laughs> today we're gonna to talk about food, nutrition. Uh, we hope to answer some questions that a lot of people end up thinking about as far as what's good food, where can I get it, how do I make sure I'm consistently eating good food to support healthy habits, and a body that hopefully feels good, because that's what we want. So, uh, I don't really know how to start this other than, <laughs> let's start by this right here. I'm new to the area. Back where I came from, we had a, um, a meat share, which is something that's really cool if you've never heard of a meat share before, but there's a farm back home that we would get all of our meat from, uh, chicken, beef, and pork. You even had the option to get organ meats, which we don't have to jump into all that. But um, a Do lot. Do you like of, liver? I've tried so many different ways to <laughs> eat liver, and I've always had a hard time. It's it's like a running joke in our house to try to figure out the best way to eat liver. The best way that we did it was we cut it up into little cubes and wrap bacon around it, and that Ooh, helped. Ooh, back bacon wrapped anything mm -hmm. is. <laughs> But Pretty I think stellar. over the years, I think our dog got more of the liver than we did. <laughs> yeah. Um, the most interesting way that we did it, though, was I would take the liver. This may sound gross to some of you guys out there. I would, and liver is really tough. Yes, it's chewy. I would cut it up. Now, so it was raw. I cut it up into little bitty cubes. Uh -huh. I got toothpicks, froze it in the freezer. Okay. So what I would do, and it, on parchment paper, covered it really nicely. Each day I would take it like a little like pill. Oh, okay, just swallow it. Never tasted it. Okay. Here's the problem with that. I forgot it was in the freezer. You know, some days <laughs> you're like, uh, did I take that? I don't think so. So anyway, I thought that that was a pretty clever way to do it. That's yeah. not, it's not my idea. I got that from somebody. <laughs> um, I do love that though, so, that's cool. Anyway, going back to the topic, <laughs> meat share is a great way to get high quality meat. Uh, new to the area, and I haven't really found anything like that yet. Um, we do have, um, my husband and I um, participated in a meat share, um, as well as Brandon, and I think one other person at this gym. Um, but it's such a small organization. Um, we actually had to wait for the cow to mature and grow and be ready to be butchered. So we're talking about like, from the time we all signed up, it was like an eight month process. I was under the indication that when we signed up, it was gonna be like next month, we'll get our meat. Mm -hmm. So that was just me not being in the know pretty much um, what I was signing up for, but they do exist around here. Okay, cool. um, and I'm happy to pass along information to you or to anybody who's interested on that farm and that meat share. Um, it is local, I think it's up the north side of Jacksonville. So. Okay, and there's probably like farmers market when they're in season that you can yeah. maybe go and find like really good sources of eggs. Yes. Good quality produce. Yes. Meats. Um, and I think honestly the reason that we're even talking about that stuff is nutrition is one of those things that I think is easy for us to take um, for granted just because I mean, we start eating from day one and then you just get into habits, you go to the grocery store, oh, I like this, I like that, and you just kind of get yeah. whatever is easy, you know? Yep. At the base level, optimal nutrition is gonna come from us being active about it and we wanna eat foods that is in the most whole form possible. So minimally processed food in its most uh, original state as possible because there's a really good book that I read one time, I'll show it to you, called It Starts With Food, and not necessarily to promote one particular book, but this book really changed the way that I think about food. And in it, what they say is, there's four standards that food needs to follow for our body, and just for us living. Number one, it should promote a healthy psychological response. We know when we eat highly sugary foods yeah. that it's highly addictive, and it changes the way that you 
really just the way that you think about food. You, you just start eating things without even thinking about it, you yeah. know? Like for me, cheese dip, you know? <laughs> yes, yeah. you're a cheese dip connoisseur. You just, you just don't even know it's going, uh -huh. you know? Yep, so absolutely. We need that healthy psychological response. We need our food to promote a healthy hormonal response in our body because that's like our internal drugs in our body that drive processes. Yes. You know? Yep. Um, and quickly, going on to three and four, uh, we need our food to promote a healthy gut. Um, that's important because of the fact that, you know, some people would argue that the majority of our immune system is actually in our gut, like 70% of the immune system. Yeah. Which moving on that into number four, which you want your food to support a healthy immune system and hopefully minimize inflammation in the body. A lot of disease processes start by this silent inflammation, this chronic inflammation that just is going on because our body is always in a struggle just fighting off invaders or whatever the case may be so not to dive too deep into that but those are four standards that i like to think about when it comes to nutrition because optimizing our nutrition is hugely important for just the way that we feel in our daily lives but also good nutrition is going to support the hard work that you do here in the gym yeah um and that's what i i was going to make that point as well that you know, you're only in the gym, let's say maybe three hours a week, maybe four or five, depending on your workout schedule. So why work your tail off in here and then go home and eat pizza and Oreos and ice cream and things that aren't promoting and supporting all the work that you do in here to help you have, to feel great and probably have the, the look that you want that you're working so hard for. Um, Cause, and I think, those four topics that you hit on, what I take away from it, um, the big overarching theme is we want to feel good and be healthy. Like, right. I mean, when it comes down to it, everyone wants to wake up in the morning and be like, ah, oh, I feel good. Like, right. who doesn't want that? So eating to sustain that um, sounds easy, but in our culture where things are so readily available through the drive through and mm -hmm. on the packaged aisles on the grocery store, it's so easy to get swayed by the the quick stuff, mm -hmm. the easy to do stuff. But you and I both enjoy cooking. Right. So firsthand, we can say that you can do it even with a busy lifestyle. Oh, yeah. Um, do you, maybe we can talk about some, um, just some, some food stuff for a minute, like um, things we do personally, like maybe that are, is healthier options in our cooking, um, yeah. things like that. Let's point out the fact here, since this is being recorded and it could be used in court, <laughs> I, uh, there was a time that I did not like to cook. Okay. So, you know, I was a little bit younger and it was probably more in like the bachelor type days, but it's easy to get stuck in the mindset of, I don't have time to cook, uh, this and that, when the, the reality is you can find time to cook. Yeah. Um, so some of the things that I do, and obviously, eating healthy, there's strength in numbers too. So yes. just like you have a gym community, eating healthy, you can find that community too. And, and really, I mean, even just, it could start with one, like your spouse or whoever. So if you get on the same page in the house, the cool thing about that is, you know, you share a fridge and cabinets with that person, you know? So you'll have like healthy food in the house and then you'll have an accountability partner there too. So things that we do is, I mean, we go to the grocery store on a pretty routine basis. Yes because most of the food that's healthy, and we were just talking about this, whole food, meats and produce, you know, that's the kind of stuff that when you buy it at the grocery store, within a few days, it's not gonna be good if you don't use it. So uh, we're talking about staying away from the stuff in boxes and the highly processed foods because they're highly refined, they have a lot of sugar, they have a lot of chemicals, they had a lot of additives and preservatives that make them able to stay on that shelf. Yeah. So. Step number one is I would recommend go to the grocery store often so that you have fresh food. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And that goes for every, I mean, meats, yeah. Oh, yeah. vegetables, eggs, all that stuff. I mean, you don't want 
your meat to be able to be eaten three weeks later when it's been sitting on your refrigerator shelf. Yeah. That's not good. That's not good, no. <laughs> and something that we do is we kind of spend, because we do get busy during the week, we spend Sunday as a day that we'll go to the store and then we'll start cooking. And um, we're not, you know, it's always struck me, I'm, it, I'm amazed some people just do not like leftovers, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like if it's been in the fridge, I'm not heating that back up, I'm not eating that, throw it out. We'll cook stuff, you can freeze it, you can put it in the fridge so that you have it so that you can say, okay, I have lunch, I have dinner. Yeah. Do we ever eat out? Yeah, sometimes we do, but most of the time we're making our food at home because we know where it comes from. And then we were talking about this before, there is like, there is something really cool about making your own food, taking the time to put those ingredients in and create that. And that's one of the things I said in a video a while back that I love to get in the kitchen. I love that creative outlet. It's, it's cool, put on some music um, yeah. you know, and just, just get going because it's really fun to create. And this is somewhat of a subtopic. It can be a family time thing. It's a good, you know, maybe everyone's busy throughout the day, but you take a good 20 to 30 minutes to cook together kids, get them involved. They can wash vegetables. That's easy. Um, you know, it's it, it should be enjoyed. I think that's what a lot of people get away from. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, it's cooking. But right. it's not supposed to be that way. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I think you're a great example of that too. Going from someone who was not as into cooking mm -hmm. to now enjoying it. Right. Um, so. Yeah, it's, it's, there's something really, like I said, cool about creating that. And then also if you know that you're ha you have like really high quality ingredients, yeah. you know, we think about, okay, I have my meat, I have my starch, I have this and that, but really, you know, we think about protein, we think about carbohydrates, we think about good sources of fat, but when we're getting, you know, really good sources of, of meat and vegetables and fruits, there's all those other things that we don't think about that support our body, you know, phytonutrients, antioxidants, yep. you know, micronutrients, yep. um, all these things that really support us on a cellular level that we're getting just because of the fact that we're getting good quality ingredients, you know, produce and vegetables that haven't been sprayed with a lot of like pesticides, herbicides, fungicides, um, you know, getting good quality meat that, you know, is sustainable and humanely raised that's free yeah. from like antibiotics and growth hormone and, you know, cows that aren't eating a whole lot of corn and grain right. just to fatten up quickly, you know. Yeah, I read something the other day that blew me away. Basically, in the U.S. alone, antibiotics that are used for agricultural, like uh, farming practices with pigs and and cattle and all that, we use four times the amount of antibiotics with animals than we do with people. Oh my gosh! Now, I don't know. You may read something different, but still, that is pretty alarming because yes. we're talking about. You know, once you use a whole lot of antibiotics, then you know things get resistant to those yeah. antibiotics over time. And then you're creating these super bugs and whatever, you know. And and that's in your kids. And, and your... we're eating this food, yeah. you know. So that's one of the biggest things. You want to eat a healthy animal so that you're getting good quality meat. Um, if you eat meat, you know, some people don't do that, but I do. Yeah, and um, I think it's also important to mention, um, you know. Cost is always a factor with things, and we understand that. I mean, we watch our spending at the grocery store just like everybody else. Um, so I know you and I talked about, we get asked a lot, you know, do I do the really quality grass-fed meat or do I do organic produce? Like, how do I pick and choose if I can't afford it all? Like, what do I do? Um, and I tend to agree with you. We both said, if you're an, a meat eater, Eat your quality meats, um, your grass-fed, if, if that's what you can afford, mm -hmm. um, and then you can always wash your produce. So right, absolutely, yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't you can't change the quality of that right. meat. You know, like that's the way it is. But at least you can take that produce and wash the exterior of it, and at least get something off of that. You know. Yeah. And going to produce, and you know, another question that pops up too is like hey, what vegetables and what fruit should I be eating, you know? Yeah. And really the best answer to that to somebody is whatever you can most consistently eat. Sure, it's really great to get a variety of fruits and vegetables out there because you're getting different antioxidants, you're getting different phytonutrients and benefit, but ultimately what we need to be doing is eating fruits and vegetables from just the 
you know, mineral aspect of it or the vitamin aspect of it. But then also, you know, we're getting fiber from yes. those types of foods too, which is extremely important because fiber is dense. It helps us to feel full when we eat so that we're not reaching and grabbing for cookies and all that kind of stuff. But then also fiber is really healthy for, you know, our colon and, and making sure that we have good GI health as well, which is not something we really think about you know but it's pretty important because we want to promote a healthy gut yeah it goes know? back to everything we started with you know helping that immune system healthy gut all that good stuff um, yeah so again we're not promoting go out and spend a zillion dollars at the grocery store eat what you can afford but make it the best quality that you can afford absolutely and don't be afraid to I mean, you can subscribe to whatever, whatever type of eating that you want to, yes. but here's something that I find helpful because, I mean, practical application is, is what's going to help you create habits. So we go to the grocery store frequently, we make time to get in the kitchen and start cooking stuff. Typically that's going to be like on a Sunday just so we can kind of get our week started. But I like reference. I like to have stuff. So I'll use the internet. I'll find yes. recipes. Um, I like to be creative and, and add some stuff to recipes, but I'm not going to sit down and say, you know, I, I just, I haven't got to that point where I can create a recipe. So anyway, yeah. I mean, just to kind of show you, these are these are books that I'll use. I mean, there's all kinds of really good recipes in these. And I just show you this to say, this is my reference. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't have to go out and buy the same ones that I have, obviously, but yeah. just anything that's going to give you like, okay, oh, that sounds good. I can make that or we'll put this and, you know, whatever you want to do with that. But, um, and a lot of these websites and blogs and things out there will create a grocery list for you. I mean, they oh, make yeah. it as easy as possible. So use those resources. Um, again, I'm, I'm all about the, the ease of the whole process, the grocery shopping, the cooking, the, the preparation, the cooking, all that stuff. So that's something I like to use. Um, I'm sure we can link to a couple of those um, underneath this video, but I mean, the resources are out there. So for oh, people yeah. to say, well, I don't know what to cook. I mean, that's kind of a null and void point to right. say why you can't eat healthy, so. Yeah, ooh, that, you know, you just reminded me of something too, because one of the hurdles that I have, and when I say I, I mean my wife and I, because we do a lot of shopping together. That's yeah. like some, I don't know really how that started, but we like to go to the grocery store together. We, yeah. it's, it's fun to do that together. We spend that time together. Not that it's really exciting. Sometimes I guess it can be, <laughs> but. Ooh, a fresh potato. <laughs> exactly, grab them. But how many times do you guys go to the store and it's like, oh my gosh, what are we here for? Uh, yes it happens to us and you just then you just start grabbing stuff and if you're hungry you're like ooh, this yeah. is good and you're just like why did i get all that stuff so a grocery list is really a good idea to have before you go to the grocery store absolutely and pick out some recipes you like whether it's in a book like what i just showed or online and just have a game plan yeah so. yeah and even take it as far as for me because my life is a little hectic i plan stuff out physically on a calendar like thaw chicken on this day you know pull out the prepared zucchini noodles on this day like mm -hmm. i write it all out so i don't give myself any excuse to be like oh well we have to order pizza because i forgot to mm -hmm. prep dinner um i think preparation is just probably one of the biggest aspects of eating healthy to be honest in right. our busy lives mm -hmm. i mean everybody's busy so yeah um, and experiment with stuff too because like sometimes i'll go back into my little kid mentality of like, oh, that looks gross. I don't like it, you know? And then, well, have you ever had it? No. So <laughs> yeah. try it, you know? Like, yeah. like zucchini noodles. You know, it doesn't really sound great, but man, that was, that was, found that in a recipe, tried it. We have a little spiralizer thing. Yeah. That was really good. Spaghetti squash instead of spaghetti noodles, if you just want to try that sometime. Those so are good. two, yeah, it's really good. And that's two really great ways to increase the fiber in your diet, you know, trying that stuff sometimes. So, um, yeah, that's one of the biggest tips I can give to people out there too is don't be afraid to experiment with different types of foods just to see if, if you like it. I don't know if you guys have ever tried jicama before, yeah. and that's with a J, but yeah. it's, it's a starchy, it looks almost like a raw potato, but it yeah. has a buttery kind of sweetness to it. You eat it raw, it's and so it's good. such a great little snack to have with like carrots and celery. I mean, um, so 
I don't think I'd ever had that there's prior a whole, to a few years you know, ago. Yeah, I mean. There's a whole world of vegetables and fruits out there that are not apples, bananas, and spinach. So, mm -hmm. yeah, right. to your point, just experiment. It is cool. I mean, worst comes to worst, you don't like it, so you don't buy it again. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's pretty yeah. cool. So. so, nutrition is something that we have to take action with. You can't rely upon somebody to tell you, eat this, eat that. I mean, we're all so different, biochemical individuality. Inside, we're all made up just a little bit differently. We have different metabolic types. So, you know, I might eat a little bit more protein than Amy. She may eat, you know, more probably more fat. Good sources of fat. <laughs> I mean, because we are, we're so different. So, yeah. you have to do some self experimentation. You have to see how you feel with different foods. And sometimes that can be hard. So, you know, really, like if I'm working with somebody, uh, I give them a food log that will have detailed instructions of after you ate this, how did you feel? And if you wait until like later in the day, like hours after you eat, chances are you're not going to remember how did I feel when I ate that? So, you know, some foods can make you feel tired. Some can make you feel really great. So that's why it's so important to take action with your food because we have control over the foods that we eat and what kind of movement and activity that we do. And those are two huge steps for us trying to maintain a nice, healthy existence. Yeah, absolutely. You can only do what you can control. And right. those two things are about it. Yeah. So. Well, cool. All right, so um, I guess if anyone has any questions about any of that stuff, because we didn't want to get like too specific on that, but I'm always happy to share any kind of information that I have. I know Amy is too, so reach out to us. That's why we're here. We're trying to give you some good content that hopefully will support, first of all, what you're doing in here. Secondly, really overall, just feeling better in your daily life. So. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a good way to sign off. Sayonara. Sayonara. We had fun. <laughs> and uh, thank you. Mm.